Tracking, alerting, protecting. This is WKYT News at 430. A recently retired Lexington firefighter is killed in a motorcycle accident in Bourbon County. Welcome news for drivers in Lexington as the Clays Mill Road expansion is finally complete. We'll hear from neighbors about the project. Nearly two dozen World War II and Korean War veterans from Kentucky are enjoying a full day of honors and sightseeing in Washington, D.C. We'll show you the special trip. WKYT News at 430 starts now. Good afternoon, Sam Dick and Amber Philpot reporting. Central Kentucky fire crews are mourning the death of a retired Lexington firefighter. He was killed in a motorcycle crash. Investigators say 54-year-old Tim Claggett lost control of his bike last night near North Middletown in Bourbon County. He died at the scene. WKYT's Whitney Wetzel has reaction from his former co-workers. It's our top story at 4:30. It was on this road that a recently retired Lexington firefighter lost control of his motorcycle and then was struck by an oncoming vehicle. The natural high around the stations and stuff is not there today. The Bourbon County coroner confirms former Lexington firefighter Tim Claggett died in a motorcycle crash yesterday. Investigators say Claggett lost control of his bike on Thatcher's Mill Road close to North Middletown. That's when an oncoming car hit him. Claggett had just retired from the Lexington Fire Department in 2012. He worked there for 25 years. The last eight of those years he spent working at Station 20. Claggett's fellow firefighters say he was the station cook and was known for loving to ride his motorcycle. We used to joke with him about his old motorcycle because it looked like Prince from Purple Rain. So he'd pull in the parking lot and we'd say, hey, Prince, you know, because it, it was hilarious. But and he always took it well. He was always very good natured. Claggett retired as a lieutenant with the Lexington Fire Department. He was 54 years old. In Bourbon County, Whitney Watzel, WKYT. Claggett leaves behind his wife, three sons, a daughter, and a grandchild. His funeral arrangements are still pending. A Lexington man was arrested yesterday. Police say he poured gas on his girlfriend and threatened to light her on fire. 50-year-old Larry Higgins was charged with wanton endangerment. He punched his girlfriend in the head, police say, during an argument. They say Higgins then poured gas on her, had a lighter, and said he would set her on fire. When she threatened to call police, Higgins drove away and was charged with driving on a DUI suspended license. Lexington police are trying to figure out what led up to a man being hurt while picketing. Officers were called to Bluegrass Station about 6 this morning after reports of a man being hit by a car. But we've learned the man actually ran into the car that was not moving. He was taken to the hospital with minor injuries. About 170 people have been on strike since Tuesday. A union spokesman says they are picketing over unfair labor practices and proposed pay cuts. Today is our last day of summer-like weather before it finally starts to feel like fall here in the bluegrass. And that means some big changes starting tomorrow. Chief Meteorologist Chris Bailey joins us from the First Alert Weather Center. We might just skip over fall, right? Yeah, I think we're just going to say to heck with October. We're going straight from August into November air in the coming days. A heck of a uh, temperature drop is on the way. Current thermometers. Boy, oh boy, you got the flip flops on. We got the shorts out. It's in the low and mid 80s throughout the entire area. Mix of sun and clouds. So we're seeing a little more cloud cover streaming in on that western horizon. This is live first alert defender as of now that has nothing across our part of the world. Look at the thunderstorms, though. Gathering steam just to the west of Bowling Green and Nashville into Paducah and southern parts of Illinois. And a severe weather outbreak is currently ongoing across parts of the Mississippi River Valley into the deep south. All kinds of severe thunderstorm watches and warnings are out. You see the warnings in the yellow boxes across parts of the Ozarks. That's with an area of low pressure that is off to our west. That's going to come barreling its way on into town tomorrow. As the cold front moves in, showers and thunderstorms will increase to go along with a lot of gusty winds for your Friday. Then by the weekend, wouldn't you know it, we go from summer to the potential for a little kiss of frost out there. We'll show you the hour-by-hour hour forecast, guys, that shows better than a 50-degree temperature drop from where we are now to the lowest point this weekend. You can stop right now. <laughs> it's all right. Thanks, Chris. We're tracking a traffic alert out of Lexington this afternoon. A man's car flipped upside down. It happened at Nicholasville and West Reynolds Roads earlier today. Police say a woman swerved in front of the driver, and that's when he lost control of his car, and it flipped over into a Walgreens parking lot. 
He's expected to be okay and didn't need to be taken to the hospital. The other driver tried to leave, but police caught up with her. When I put on the brakes, like I said, you know, car, you just, it, it's sliding. And like I said, she pushed me offside the road, and that's about all I, I remember. And the last thing I remember is just being upside down in my car. Shannon Smith, the driver you just heard from there, walked away with cuts to his forehead and arm and a stiff lower back. Well, people who traveled down or lived near Clays Mill Road and Man of War had some great news today. That widening project is complete. WKYT's Rebecca Smith has more on why neighbors are so relieved that this portion is finished. Crews have been working on the project since 2012. They've added bike lanes, turn lanes, and have widened sidewalks to fix safety issues and alleviate heavy traffic between Harrodsburg Road and Twain Ridge. The hope is that traffic troubles will be reduced with the addition of lanes, retaining walls, sidewalks here at the corridor of Manowar and Clay's Mill. Between 15 to 20,000 vehicles travel the road a day, but that could jump to 25,000 vehicles by the year 2020. Neighbors say it's a sign of progress. Uh, traffic would back up to beyond where we live, and we live uh, three, four blocks away. And what would happen is because of the left turn lane and going forward and all, they couldn't, they, the traffic just wouldn't move. In Lexington, Rebecca Smith, WKYT. Well, another phase of the project is the widening of Keithshire and Waco. That's expected to take place next spring. What a special day. Several dozen war veterans from Kentucky are in Washington, D.C. today. They're being honored for their service. It's called the Honor Flight, and it's a one-day trip for veterans to see memorials built to honor them. WKYT's Phil Pendleton is in Washington. He has a preview of a story he's working on for later tonight. We are here at the Iwo Jima Memorial, the third stop on this tour of memorials here in Washington, D.C. The day started very early at the Louisville International Airport as almost 20 veterans, mostly from World War II and Korea, boarded a Southwest flight to Baltimore. They were met with applause from strangers, many clapping and waving flags. From then it was on to the World War II Memorial, then the Korean War Memorial, and then here. All of this is free for the vets, paid for Kentucky's electric cooperatives. Many of these vets are in their 90s. They say had it not been for this trip, they probably would have never seen these memorials. In Washington, D.C., Phil Pendleton, WKYT. And we look forward to his stories coming up. Phil will have a complete update on the day's activities during our 11 o'clock news tonight after the football game. Depression, it is a word that many often avoid, but one that needs to be heard, especially here in Kentucky. It is something that one in 10 Americans are living with. Tonight, how some new research at the University of Kentucky is helping shed light on this dark subject and helping women open up about it. It's a story that's in progress for you at 6 tonight. For years, Shelley Spillman has been living with depression. As news editor of the Anderson News, she recently decided to open up about her years of dealing with a loneliness that can come with depression. It's something she wishes that, that more people alone. would talk about, especially women. I think it's very important to keep this dialogue open because for some reason we're we're conditioned not to talk about this. It's we're not open about it. And it's just sad to me because there's so many people that feel like they're the only ones that have this. Tonight at 6, how researchers at the University of Kentucky are trying to break the stigma of depression by getting more women to open up while trying to learn more about why some women living in eastern and southeastern Kentucky are dealing with depression at higher rates than other parts of our state. Amber, it's sad to hear that the numbers are going up. Do they, researchers have any idea why that's happening? Well, I wish I had a better answer for you, but, but here's the deal. We're talking about an area that for decades has been depressed in many ways, economically, of mm -hmm. course. You're talking about an area that has higher rates of cancer, stroke, heart disease, uh, death. So the key is really about getting women to talk. And in this study, uh, there were 28 women that they got to open up, and that's a, that's a good start. Sure. And the conversation is ongoing. And many of those women said they came forward because they wanted to help someone else not live in this darkness. So um, it's an interesting look. And, uh, and if it just keeps the conversation going with one mm -hmm. more person, that's the good news. And how courageous is that woman you interviewed to be public with her story like Wrote that? Wrote about it in the newspaper. Yeah. She's used, like us, of writing about sure. other people. And she decided to open up herself. So good for her. Tonight at 6, you'll All see right. more. Look forward to it. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much.